The Christian Economist. God's goal, 100% employment. <clears throat> this topic, God's goal, 100% employment. <clears throat> Throughout the scriptures, Throughout the scriptures, the Lord kept trying to get around the fallen nature of the human being to provide for the well-being of the people. But God will not interfere with the free will power of choice granted to each person. So the problem has always been <clears throat> that many abuse that majesty of free will to cheat each other. But it's not that business is about how much people can make. It's almost as though the purpose of business is not so much about profit, but rather <coughs> about providing work for everyone as gainful employment. One curious element is that people should get what they need, yes, but there are those whose exemplary work and merit dictate that they receive more. These are the more deserving, that's right. They can be trusted that they will use their resources wisely. For him that hath, to him shall be given. For he who hath, to him shall be given. <clears throat> and he that hath not, from him shall be taken even that which he hath. Mark 4.25 Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken and shaken together, and running over, shall men give into your bosom. <clears throat> For with the same measure that ye meet, with all it shall be measured to you again. If therefore ye have not been, then that, that is uh, Luke 6, 38. <coughs> and here's another verse. If therefore ye ha have not been faithful in the right, unrighteous mammon, who will commit to your trust the true riches? Luke 16:11 What would they the more deserving do with their increase most likely use it to buy equipment and so on to better get the job done many will be working for the lord and won't draw a salary these especially need faith for either finances or supply or both <clears throat> but the body of the people should all be gainfully employed somehow according to their ability. If you're in business, your job isn't to export your labor overseas, <clears throat> but to find jobs for everyone to the best of your ability in your community. Then, in addition, if you can help those overseas, by all means. But you can't take employment from the local community to overseas places because the labor is cheaper. <clears throat> Basically put, the servant of God would use the increase to establish the ministry in an, in an area. Maybe a new locale or perhaps a new type of service for the Lord. <clears throat> Their abundance is everyone's, in a manner of speaking. If they abound, everyone else also benefits indirectly. Because the ones who put forth a special effort to do well, it enriches all the community. 
What do you think happened to the community and the neighborhood where the two servants, those men, um, with the pound each to invest? In the Lord's parable, what do you think happened to the community or neighborhood where they did their work? More than likely, those who worked with those men prospered. But here's an important thing. The worldly have inherent hatred for Jesus and the saved. This has been historically a major cause for lack of prosperity in worldly communities, such as Rome during its decline. The, quote, nobleman, unquote, in the parable who gave the pound to these men and also the third who did nothing with his pound, was hated by his subjects. And um, here to quote the scriptures, But his citizens hated him, and sent a message after him, saying, We will not have this man to reign over us. That's Luke 19.14. So therefore, upon his return, the nobleman had to execute those in his kingdom who turned out to be enemies. Illustrative, among other things, of the Battle of Armageddon. As this helps illustrate, among other things, uh, or is illustrating, among other things, of the battle of Armageddon at the second coming of the Lord. It says, But those mine enemies which would not that I reign over them bring hither and slay them before me. Luke 9.27 This inherent hatred is one major cause of economic difficulty for the worldly. Jesus warned his disciples and subsequently all of us of the problem of this hatred. Jesus said, If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you, out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. John uh, 15, 18, and 19. Now, the parable of the talents given to the three servants has some other details of importance. Some were more deserving and received more to work with, received more to work with. In this illustration, each was given resources corresponding to the ability of each to work with what they had. It says the master of those servants, quote, it says of the master of those servants, quote, and unto one he gave five talents, to another two and to another one, to every man accor according to his several ability, and straightway took his journey. Matthew twenty-five fifteen. So it is that the Lord will reckon with each of us to see what we did with, with what we were given during our lives in this world. It's important not to get angry because someone else seems to have more to work with than you, but rather each of us has to do his or her best with what we've got. Whatsoever thy hand findeth to do, do it with thy might. Ecclesiastes 9 verse 10. Initiative is rewarded that those with it may bring benefit to all else around them. Remember the parable of the good steward who, when his Lord returns, finds the steward doing what? Finds him giving the fellow servants the, their meat in due season. It says, quote, And the Lord said, 
who is that faithful and wise steward, whom the, his Lord shall f make ruler over his household, to give them their portion of meat in due season? Blessed is that servant, whom his Lord, when he cometh, shall find so doing. Luke twelve forty two through 43. So, when the right people prosper, the whole prospers. When the wrong people, or even the undeserving, get more than the basics, the whole languishes. Quote, the earth mourneth and fadeth away, the world languisheth and fadeth away, the haughty people of the earth do languish. Close quotes. This is what is happening in the world today. Quote, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the, when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Proverbs 29.2 But why would the, quote, basic, unquote, people need to receive sufficiency? The Lord cares for the lowly. For it is, among other things, that out of the ranks of the greatest numbers, that those of initiative emerge. Out of the ranks of the greatest numbers, it is, that those of initiative emerge. That's how God works. Look at the people he used in the Bible. King David was a shepherd. Peter was a fisherman. Gideon was a farmer, and so on. Even Jesus himself, before he began his ministry, was a carpenter. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. 1 Corinthians one twenty six. God uses the average to produce the extraordinary. He said, quote, For my strength is made perfect in weakness. Close quotes. 2 Corinthians 12, 9. 